Let's begin discussing chapter 31. So in this chapter we're going to talk a bit about monetary policy. And of the two macroeconomic policies that we will cover in this class, monetary policy is arguably one of the most important to short run um, in, in normal times, short run um, economic well-being. So in this, in this chapter we're going to explain how monetary policy works and we're going to do this through the aggregate supply aggregate demand model. And while the aggregate supply aggregate demand model leaves a lot to be desired as far as truly describing how the economy works because it is quite simple, it does, it is really still the single best model for getting an intuition behind what's going on with um, policy and policy decisions. Summarize the structure of the Fed. Describe how the Fed changes the supply of money primarily through open market operations. And we'll define the Fed funds rate. We'll discuss how the Fed uses it as an intermediate target. Um, we'll talk about policy and policy targeting and how that works. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the Taylor Rule. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Taylor Rule, but um, it is a very it has played a very important role in policy over the last um, 20 to 30 years. Um, define the yield curve and explain how its shape reflects the limit of the Fed's ability to control the economy. So, that said, let's get started. Let's first of all define monetary policy. Monetary policy is the policy of influencing the economy through changes in the banking system's reserves that influence the money supply and credit available in the economy. Now, essentially what the Federal Reserve does is, or the central bank, is they're trying to manipulate the money supply in order to either prevent inflation, in other words promote price stability, or limit unemployment, so or stimulate the economy. So depending on where we are in the business cycle, they'll either do expansionary policy to stimulate the economy or contractionary policy to um, slow the economy down. And that is expansionary means they want to make the money supply bigger and contractionary they want to make the money supply smaller. Now the question is how they do that. Now notice in this definition we talk about reserves. Well, the Fed has really tight control over base money or what we defined earlier as outside money. Well that outside money, that's money created outside of the financial system, has very tight control over but that's a pretty small part of the overall money supply and there's a lot of other things that get involved with how the money supply works between base money and um, the overall money supply. So while the Fed has control over this base money, that's what it's manipulating, it really cares about the overall money supply and so that's why we spent some time in a previous chapter talking about the money multiplier and multiple deposit creation to kind of see how that process works. Fiscal policy on the other hand is controlled by the um, federal government or state governments. That's the taxing, spending, and borrowing um, um, policies set by uh, the government institution that we're talking about. All right? That's distinct from monetary policy. So at, in the U.S. at least, we have the federal government, which takes care of federal fiscal policy. That goes through the Congress, is then um, signed into law by the president. That's handled there. Monetary policy, on the other hand, which just refers to manipulation of the money supply is done entirely by our central bank, the Federal Reserve System. So monetary policy is controlled by the central bank, as we just said, and they're two different. So the, it is not the same people controlling fiscal policy as are controlling monetary policy. One of the common mistakes that many students make is when they are asked, okay, make a policy recommendation to the Fed. Well, they'll make a fiscal policy recommendation. Well, and while that fiscal policy recommendation may be a good recommendation, it's not a good recommendation to the Fed because they have no power of fiscal policy. So, um, and monetary policy works through its influence on credit conditions and uh, ultimately through the interest rates and quantity of money in circulation. 
So we're working through these credit markets. So let's take a look at this. So we have a basic aggregate supply, aggregate demand model. Notice we have short run aggregate supply. Generally, when we're thinking about monetary policy, we think about this in terms of the short run. We generally, most economists agree that monetary policy does not have a lot of long run effects, or at least it doesn't have positive long run effects. So my view on this is that in monetary policy, the ability to make things better is somewhat limited. The ability to make things worse is pretty well unlimited. So when we think about in the long run, could monetary policy make things worse? I think very easily. Can it make it better? Um, good monetary policy fosters growth. It's an important institution for growth. Without it, it can be um, hard for an economy to grow in the long run. But can I make us grow faster through monetary policy? Mm, maybe, maybe not. Uh, it's a little like when I um, have a house plant. Can I make it grow better with fertilizer? Yes. Does that mean if I add more fertilizer, it'll grow even better? No. Right, so there's a limit to what monetary policy can do. Okay, so if we have an expansionary monetary policy, what's going to happen? That's generally going to affect aggregate demand. How is it going to do that? The expansionary pol monetary policy increases the supply of loanable funds that are available, lowering the interest rate. And if we lower the interest rate, then what happens? We consume more and we invest more. And so if we consume more and invest more, what happens? We have a rightward shift in aggregate demand, which is an increase in aggregate demand. And so we have a short run increase in real output. We've stimulated the economy, but at a cost. And the cost is a higher price level. Contractionary policy works the opposite. So with contractionary policy, say the economy is burning a little bit too hot. We are, we're a little worried about that. Um, and so we're a little worried about where the price level is so we can actually increase the interest rate by reducing the amount of money in circulation which causes lower consumption and lower investment shifting aggregate demand to the left or we'll see a reduction in aggregate demand lowering price level but at a cost and the cost is lower real output so if we put this in context of um, adding in the long run aggregate supply we can see how we can start to think about using monetary policy to smooth out business cycles. So if the economy is at or above potential um, potential um, GDP, so let's say we're here in long run equilibrium, what would happen if we had expansionary policy? Well, we'll shift aggregate de demand to the right and at least temporarily, let me go back for a second, temporarily will have a higher level of output but this higher level of output is beyond our potential monetary policy doesn't change our technology it doesn't change the amount of resources we have it just changes the amount of money in circulation and at least temporarily changes the interest rate so what happens eventually short run aggregate supply has to decrease why because we're overemployed at this point that's going to push wages up, that's going to make machinery break down faster, which is going to raise cost of production. If we raise cost of production, what happens? We're going to decrease short run aggregate supply. I don't like the way that arrow is pointed. It should point to the left because it's a leftward shift in aggregate supply. And essentially, we end up back at long run potential output, but at a higher price level. This concept is known as monetary neutrality. In other words, we think that in the long run, money doesn't really affect this potential output. Now, I will augment that and say, yes, I think monetar that monetary policy and money is basically neutral in the long run, more or less, with the caveat that good monetary policy and price stability are important encouragers of things like investment, which increases our capital stock, things like research and development, which improves our technology, that those things are more likely to happen if we have good monetary policy than if we have bad monetary policy. So in that sense, good monetary policy 
can foster an environment that's more conducive to growth. But is there a direct relationship between monetary policy and growth? Nah, not so much. All right, and that's just what we said. In the long run, we have no effect on um, potential output. We only have an effect on price level. So how in the world does this all work? Well, can we, let's, let's take this apart and look a little bit at the functions or the, the mechanics of monetary policy. So essentially what happens is the Fed decides to, well, do something. All right, so let's say it decides to increase the money supply. So right here what we have is the increase in base money. That's the direct increase that the Fed can do. Notice that it's perfectly inelastic. Why is it perfectly inelastic? Because the Fed controls this. And so it decides to increase this. Well, as this increases, we also see that because there's more base money, there's more ability to supply overall loanable funds. So this increase in supply of base money leads to an increase in the supply of loanable funds, and both lead to this decrease in the interest rate. All right, the decline in interest rates increases investment spending. Also, we should put in here, it also increases um, consumption spending as well, which shifts the aggregate demand curve to the right. Okay, so we've defined this a little bit already. Expansionary monetary policy, increasing the money supply. Contractionary monetary policy, decreasing the money supply. So let's take a look at expansionary money po monetary policy. Money supply goes up, interest goes down, investment and also consumption go up, which causes real output to go up, at least in the short run. Contractionary monetary policy, just the opposite. Money supply goes down, interest goes up, which causes investment and consumption to decrease, which causes real output to decrease in the short run. So really great, very famous economist James Tobin um, has done considerable work in the area of money demand and estimating money demand functions and looking at, well, why do we hold money? Uh, um, he's written a nice article on monetary policy. I encourage you to take a look at that for further reading.